Yeah, hi, it's Keith as you, um, at our call centre. This is Nikki. I introduced what some time ago. Um, so Nikki is actually the supervisor or the manager for the technical support. Um, and in fact, you, you can't see, we've got CJ's actually filming it. So um, he's behind the camera <laughs> smirking. He's not saying so much. What I try to do is we thought some of the common questions and trying to, where people ask the same questions over and over again. And so we've, we've listed out some of the common questions. I don't know these questions. I don't know what's going to be asked. So this is putting me on the spot a little bit. So go ahead and see. You can you try me. See if I can answer the questions. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you'll answer them all correctly. <laughs> You're very passionate about the, about the inverters. Uh, one question we get asked a lot is um, how do they set up the battery settings? How do they set up the system mode with regards to the setup that they have per client? Well, that's a massive question, is how long, <laughs> how long is a piece of string? The system mode is basically the controller that says when you charge the batteries, when you discharge the batteries. We've made life much easier. And if you look at a previous video, um, you can do it with a single button programming now. So there's a number of, pro if you're unsure how to use it, um, if you use the app, and in fact, if you see a previous video when I was in Germany, um, Joel was actually explaining how to use the app. And you can basically, click a single button and it can program everything. If you go a little bit more advanced, the, the system mode is basically says when to charge the batteries, when to discharge the batteries, the depth of discharge of the batteries. Um, to ask the simple question, how do I do it? Well, it really depends on what you want the customers to do. So first of all, what you want the system to do, first of all, write it down, decide what you want. Do you, you, normally I would recommend cycle the batteries a little bit. So even if you're just using a battery on a system that has no grid charging or force charging from the grid, Charge the batteries up during the daytime, maybe to 50%, and then discharge them later on. Uh, priority the batteries, to, and that power will prioritize the batteries up until that level, and then after that level, if you're consuming the power, it will use it. Maybe later on in the day, maybe four o'clock, it allows to discharge to say 20% or whatever. So you use all the power, you're not losing anything. And that way you get slight cycling in the batteries. So I think that's good. But please just look at a previous video and I, and I can put a link underneath it and it explains how to do this. And it's very easy. Single button press, it's so simple. Okay, thank you. Another question we have, I have 12 here, Keith, so you can be put on the spot <laughs> even more. What size inverter is needed uh, relating to, again, a Pacific client's needs? Well, it depends where you are. If you're in the UK, the easiest, the best, most popular inverter is the 3.6. And the 3.6 you can put, our 3.6 is you can put seven kilowatts of um, solar array. So it's massive. The three, why I say 3.6 is the limitation without getting special approval, which is a 16 amp connection. And you can do that. Of course, you can still be an electrical contract and approve everything else, but you can do that without special approval. It's very nice. And you can put 7,000 watts of solar panels on the roof. Again, it's, it's really simple. If you're off grid, then it really depends on your peak demand. So if you're off grid, then you need to size the inverter big enough to take your peak demand. So if your peak demand is, say, 40 amp, then an 8 kilowatt. If your, if your peak demand is 80 amp, then you need to double it to a 16 kilowatt. So it really depends. Um, so first of all, you need to know if you're off grid or you're on grid. Off grid, look at your maximum demand. If you're on grid or you're AC coupled, it doesn't matter. So if you're using a 16 amp inverter and your peak demand is 80 amp, it doesn't matter because the power doesn't flow through the inverter, it's AC coupled and therefore they're joined together. And if there's an excess power, it comes from the mains and it will function that way. But off-grid is different, so there's two different scenarios. Um, so your inverter size, as, as far as your panel's concerned, then put as much panel as you could possibly fit on the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it, and then, you know, if you need a bigger inverter to com accommodate it, but very few roofs will take more than 7,000 uh, watts, seven kilowatt. You need a pretty big roof to take more than seven kilowatt. Um, but that's the that's the rule. There's a bit many, you know, put as many panels as free. It's free electricity, it's free power. So put as much as you possibly can. But um, that's basically it. You know, off grid, then you need to look at your peak demand. On grid, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Now the question we have is, what are the settings on connecting micro inverters? Okay. Right. A lot of people ask about micro inverters. There are two ways to connect a microinverter. If you're connecting the microinverter on grid or off grid, mm -hmm. if you're connecting it on grid, then you will AC couple it. Mm -hmm. um, the settings are pretty much the same as it's on grid or off grid. Mm -hmm. However, 
If you're connecting it off-grid, then you will connect the microinverter via the auxiliary port and mm -hmm. it will go into the auxiliary port and the inverter will do some frequency shifting and they call it throttling back when it's full, so it can control it by frequency shifting. If you're AC coupling, then it can't throttle it back, so therefore the microinverter will just operate. But what it can do is it can charge the batteries. If you're AC coupled, if you start to export, our inverter can input the power back into the battery and export it out. Um, it's simple, you just go onto the auxiliary, you set it as under microinverter settings, and it's there, it's just a micro, it just says microinverter settings. Even if you're AC coupling, you still select the microinverter settings and it will function perfectly. Use the CT coil, which will stop the export. If you are connecting it as a, so I'm explaining two different ways of connecting it. Mm -hmm. If you're connecting it off grid, then you cannot use AC coupled because it won't work. You connect it to the auxiliary input and the auxiliary input will generate the environment for it to operate. So repeat again, off grid, then you go on the auxiliary port and then you select on the auxiliary settings, you select microinverter and you, you've got the hysteresis which, which will operate mm -hmm. and the hysteresis will be controlled by throttling back and as much as by frequency shifting or it will actually cut the power. If you're on grid, you AC couple it and the CT core prevents the export, but the settings are the same and you put the off and on. And that's basically, it's a very simple setting. Okay, um, how, to, how to connect to parallel batteries and parallel inverters? Mainly we get what is the best cable to connect those together? So first of all, if you're connecting um, paralleling inverters, um, people, you, you have to make sure, first of all, we start off with the batteries. So you're gonna parallel three inverters together, then everything needs to be balanced. Your batteries need to be balanced. And then what I'm talking about balance is your cable lengths of the batteries all need to be identical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so all three inverters must have the same length of cable to the same batteries. The batteries must be common. So you can't use three sets of batteries with three inverters in parallel. You have to use one set. Or you can have three sets, but they all go into a common buzz bomb. So everything is parallel. Everything is the same length. And then the, the, the cables from the buzz bar will go onto the inverters. Really depending on the demand. Um, if you want the cables often, if you it's depending on what you're using, if you use 25 mil or 35 mil, if you're using 25 mil battery cable, you may have to double up. Um, so you may to double up on each inverter depending on the size of the inverter. If you're using on a five kilowatt, um, then 25 would be fine. If you go into a larger inverter, you may have to double up, you need 50 mil from the buzz bar, depending on it. And often, if you've got a battery bank, you can double up. So you take from the top two through it and the bottom two reversing a complete circuit. You have an isolator, so each of the batteries will have an isolator to the common buzz bar. So you've got a safety isolator, and then the buzz bar doesn't require an isolator from the buzz bar to the inverter because you've got the protection on the batteries themselves. Um, because what you don't want to do is if you're wiring in parallel, you don't want to be switching one inverter, then mm. the next inverter, and the next inverter, they're together. Um, again, for your outputs, keep everything short as possible. Um, and everything will be, you, you can you parallel your, your load, which is your UPS, you parallel your auxiliary if you're using a generator, and you parallel your grid connections or parallel. If it's three phase, and of course you wire in three phase configuration, there's loads and loads of videos explaining that mm -hmm. uh, and how to do it. Um, but when you're actually commissioning on, on parallel inverters, always start off with the battery. I go on and on and on about this. Power it up from the battery first, make sure the system is mm -hmm. working, make sure you get normal light, mm -hmm. everything is connected, and then you, 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 you're good to go, and then you can introduce your solar and everything else. Don't parallel, you can't parallel MPPTs mm -hmm. on solar, they cannot be parallel, they're floating. So if you've, got, if you've got three inverters, you've got six MPPTs, they're all mm -hmm. working independently. Um, so cable sizes really depends on your inverter. Um, if you're using a 16 amp, then I, I, you, know, you, you could probably wire in 2.5, I would probably go to a 4 mil personally. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going onto a bigger inverter, then you would cable size accordingly. Okay. Right, um,